Welcome, Wargamers, to the Unforgiving Mortal Realms, where morality is as gray as the Twilight Realm of Olg Hish, as we point out a story that absolutely gripped me, and I hope it does for you as well. Today we cover the story of The Abandoned, a, a brutal chaos warband found in the Slaves to Darkness battle tome that highlights a moment in Mortal Realms history that I find absolutely fascinating, like a point in time that I want more stories about. And while their entry is fairly short, it's gotten me so excited to paint my Slaves to Darkness, which I've sort of very loosely based on them. I'm not going to call them the Abandoned, but it's kind of the idea behind what I was going for. And so without further ado, let's dig into it. Our story takes place back in the Age of Chaos, but it's certainly towards the beginning of it. Chaos has poured into the mortal realms in real numbers, and across Akshi, the realm of fire where our story takes place, demons and bloodbound are running rampant. Now if you've seen my uh, lore video on Akshi, you know it was a realm full of tribes and kingdoms, right? Some were rather primitive, following like these primal ancestor gods and living nomadically, while others were incredibly sophisticated city-states that reached the pinnacle of arcane technological prowess. And it's the drama between these factions and tribes and kingdoms that Korn used to enter the realm. Now, one such faction to feel the brunt of this was simply known as the Kingdom of Soul. I couldn't find it on the map of Akshi, nor reference to it in any of the story bits, but there are many such kingdoms. Like I said, it's a, it's a location, a realm that is full of these very, very different sizes and styles of kingdoms. And the Kingdom of Soul was led by King Khalid Kolmen. The people of Soul had enough distance from the initial slaughter, you know, of corn really entering the realm in force, to kind of see what was happening, right? The writing was on the wall, and they saw there was no hope for them if they stood and fought. At this point, the Battle of the Burning Skies had already occurred, Sigmar has lost Galmaraz, and has declared to all that he is closing the gates of Azir. Now, I'm not really sure how that, like, proclamation was made so that random kingdoms out in the middle of nowhere could get it, but I, I'm assuming he, like, you know, put it out into the void and all their sorcerers and scryers figured it all out. Seeing the tide of demons begin to approach the Kingdom of Souls' doorsteps, King Coleman calls for a mass exodus. We have to get to one of these gates to Azir. Now, knowing what we do about people, uh, I'm sure this was an incredibly hard decision, right? Many hard decisions were made because uh, there's no room for being slowed down. If I'm this king and I have to make this decision, immediately a few things come into my mind, right? What do you do with like the regularly sick or infirm people or the elderly or the too young to walk? Like uh, those folks of your empire, like, what happens to them? How heavily do you travel? Is it one big caravan? Every man for themselves? Uh, if it's everyone for themselves, how do you maintain order? Because now, you know, you're moving away from your kingdom and, you know, kind of like the lines of power are getting blurred because now you're all refugees. Not to mention that I'm sure there was like a portion of their population, because like I said, we know humans who just wouldn't go. They were like, my granddad built this wall and I'm not leaving it. You know, those kinds of people. Not to mention the cultural impact of leaving a home, right? A kingdom's worth of people without a kingdom of their own. I'm sure some thought that the king was a coward. Others said they had no choice. You know, the point I'm getting at here by going through all these is that there's so much wrapped up in the decision to flee that when we look at stories that have like whole Duarden Karaks destroyed and cities ransacked, like I get it. I understand why people wouldn't leave or why they'd squabble about leaving so long that it just became too late. But nevertheless, the decision was made and the flight begins. Now we don't know exactly how like long the travel from the Kingdom of Soul to the nearest, you know, Gate of Azir took. Again, we don't have a map, but we do know that only a few thousand survivors actually made it to the gate. Which, just from the name of the region, the Kingdom of Soul, tells me that was probably a very harrowing journey, right? When I hear a kingdom's worth of people is kind of picked away until only a couple thousand make it, that has to be brutal. Corn warbands were hot on their heels. I'm sure things like ambushes were a constant concern as of, you know, as is water and the difficult environments of Akshi. And so the story snippet we get here does make it seem like corn armies were bearing down on these refugees right as they finally reached the gate they sought. 
and just as the king reached out to go through this doorway to Azir, its lights flickered and it went out. The kingdom of Sol had missed its opportunity by mere moments. The gates of Azir had closed and would remain so for centuries. And with this, the last sons and daughters of Sol had been doomed inadvertently by the god king. Now at this point, it's over for these guys, right? They have nothing left. Enemies are bearing down on them. They're ragged. They're, you know, torn apart from all the travel. And I cannot imagine the level of heartache Coleman felt. All that hard decision making we talked about earlier was built on the trust that Sigmar would have a door for us. He was their hope and everything balanced upon and then he failed them. Falling to his knees, King Khalid Coleman cursed Sigmar. And he called out to the Chaos Gods, offering his soul, and the souls of his people, for a chance at vengeance. To one day walk upon Azir just as they intended, but this time to repay Sigmar for his failure as a god. And the Chaos Gods heard him. Now, we don't know if it was a specific Chaos God, or if they each, you know, kind of threw out a bit of power into the pot. But, you know, they're capricious, they sometimes do that kind of stuff. But these gods heard the king's prayer, and unlike Sigmar... They stepped up to the plate and delivered. Again, probably for amusement rather than actual care. Suddenly, all these ragged and beaten survivors of the Kingdom of Soul swelled up with power and energy. Flesh went from weak and malnourished to unnaturally strong, bulky, and like rippling with dark power. It's true, the Chaos Gods had heard their prayers, and even though, you know, they threw these guys a bone, you have to remember, this is still chaos, right? And, and now these were slaves to darkness, which meant a constant struggle to survive. You have to keep proving your worth. So, you know, they're kind of interested. They're like, I'll see where this goes. And they throw some power at these, you know, shredded up refugees. And now they have to take that and prove themselves champions. So, I say that to say that... Rather than being graciously absorbed by, you know, the corn demons that were on their tails of like, oh, you're chaos now, we're cool buddies, the people of Seoul slaughtered their pursuers with their newfound strength. And I point this out because it's easier for people to say like, well, why'd they fight the demons? It's like, man, the ruinous powers are constantly plotting against one another and seeking champions that have to prove themselves in battle. They're like, you know, again, I'll give you a little bit, but you need to make that work. And so he did. And with these newfound blessings, they turn on their pursuers and slaughter the corn forces to the man. Having survived their ordeal and bound themselves to a life of servitude, King Khalid Kolmen of the Kingdom of Seoul creates a new identity for his reborn people. What were the refugees of the conquered soul are now known as the Abandoned and would lead a life of slaughter and mayhem that painted them as some of the most intense like prosecutors of Sigmar's faithful. Every shrine to the god king needs to be desecrated, every believer tortured until they see that their god's never coming, just until, like, you know, just like he didn't come for the kingdom of Sol. He couldn't even keep the door open. And so that's it, that's the lore blurb, and I just fell in love with it, so let's take a break here and talk about why is this so cool. Like, I just... It's such a great story, right? It's not too over the top. Nothing happens here that is so, you know, abstract fantasy, all this crazy stuff. It's not hard to fathom. And I imagine, you know, happened to several people. The doors had to be closed at some point. And while it's truly tragic, some lives were going to be sacrificed to keep what little containment Sigmar could do, right? When he makes a decision, I need to close the door. That immediately sparks the fact that some people are going to be left out. We're on a timetable. And I can look at that and be like, logically, like, okay, I understand that, you know, some lives are, are going to be locked out. I, I, I get it. But what if it was my life, right? Where the cold, hard logic begins to break down and it's just tragedy. And it's simultaneously both. It is, you know, mathematically the correct thing to do to cut off, you know, people fleeing into his ear. But then also it is equally a tragedy. I don't think that this, you know, shows Sigmar as being evil or anything. The second he announced that the gates were closing, you know, a timer started. And anyone who wasn't there when the timer went off was just straight up out of luck. I get why it had to be done that way. But I also get why villains and warbands like the Abandoned can be born from that kind of moment. 
And something here I wanted to kind of tack on at the end here, right? Even if they got through, like we know this is readers, but they don't, um, it was not going to be easy street. When we went through the cities of Sigmar lore in, in their battle tome, the second that those doors closed, all hell broke loose in Azir as Sigmar went on a rampage, the only way a god can to purge any hint of chaos from those who made it through. Now, seeing as how the king in our story gave himself the chaos immediately after being denied safe harbor, who's to say that the same, you know, weakness of conviction wouldn't see him purged along with thousands of others in Azir? Everything everywhere was bad, and it was bad because of chaos, or bad because the good guys had to do ugly things to contain the chaos. And honestly, uh, that's why I love this story, right? It has such an understandable motivation and a clear story arc as like how he started, how he ended. And mixed with that info we have here as readers that the king wouldn't as far as what happened in Azir once the doors closed. But hey friends, tell me your thoughts, right? What are your thoughts as far as, you know, did he make the right call in fleeing for the gate? You know, would it, would it be better to die faithful or run and then have his whole story arc happen. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I love for warband stories. So let me know your opinions in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you all so much for watching this lore video and I hope to catch you in my next one. Happy Wargaming. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was made possible by the folks over here to the left. These are my top supporters over here on YouTube and on Patreon that keep this channel going. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a supporter and get some cool things in the process like exclusive pictures and interactions with me and get your questions answers here on the channel, go ahead and click any of the links down below or the join button on the community page over on YouTube. Regardless of your choice, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me with this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Happy Wargaming.